The highly toxic mental, physical and emotional effects of mercury on the body have been well recognised for centuries. Although you are exposed to mercury through a variety of sources, including eating fish and the preservative for Merisol, which is included in some vaccines, for most people the majority of their exposure comes from their dental amalgam fillings. Amalgam was developed 180 years ago and has never been exposed to any meaningful safety testing. It is a mixture of 50% liquid mercury and 50% powdered metals and it never truly sets, instead becoming a stiff paste of alloys in a liquid mercury base. These different metals create a battery in the moisture of the mouth and when these fillings discharge their electrical current, the liquid mercury is vaporised. Mercury truly acts like the proverbial spanner in the works in the body, disrupting biological function on a number of different levels. The following is not exhaustive, but presents a list of some 150 documented symptoms of mercury toxicity. Up to 80% of inhaled mercury vapour is absorbed through the lungs. From here it travels to all the other tissues and organs of the body in the circulation, but particularly concentrates within the kidney, liver and brain. The presence of mercury in the lungs causes chronic breathing disorders such as asthma and bronchitis. Mercury is both highly neurophilic, which means that it binds tightly to nerves, and highly lipophilic, which means that it binds tightly to fats. When distributed around the body in the circulation, it is absorbed into the nerve endings that regulate all the functions of the body. From there, it slowly tracks up the nerves into the central nervous system in what is known as retrograde axonal transport. It prevents nerves regenerating by disrupting the protein tubulin, severely disrupts nerve function, and also attacks the insulating myelin sheath surrounding some nerves. Mercury from amalgam easily crosses the blood-brain barrier and can damage any part of the central nervous system, including the master endocrine glands at the base of the brain, which control both the nervous and endocrine systems. Mercury can produce a host of mental, emotional and behavioural changes and what are considered psychiatric disorders by disrupting neurotransmitters, interfering with endocrine gland function and hormones, and causing destruction of nervous pathways. The levels of mercury in the brain have been shown to be directly related to the number of amalgam fillings in the mouth. Whilst mercury is highly detrimental on its own, its destructive power can be increased a hundredfold by exposure to other toxic metals such as aluminium, lead or cadmium. Mercury is also recognised to collect in the reproductive organs in both men and women where it can cause a variety of disorders including infertility. It is known to directly cross the placental barrier in pregnant women and also to concentrate in breast milk and mercury levels in newborn babies have been shown to be directly related to the number of amalgam fillings in the mother's mouth. Although mercury may most often lead to miscarriage and stillbirth, it can also cause developmental neurological and behavioural defects such as ADHD and autism in the offspring. Mercury from dental amalgam fillings is also recognised to severely impact kidney function, such that animal studies have shown a 50% reduction in kidney filtration within a month of placement of the first amalgam filling. Mercury is also recognised to cause kidney and bladder diseases. Mercury also accumulates throughout the body in muscles and joints, causing the muscle tenderness and pain familiar to fibromyalgia sufferers and the joint pain, stiffness and swelling of rheumatoid arthritis. In particular, mercury seems to collect in the heart muscle and valves and has been found at 22,000 times the levels found in the blood. Mercury is strongly associated with elevated levels of homocysteine and cholesterol and heart attacks. It also causes red blood cells to rupture and replaces the iron in haemoglobin 
so that the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood can be reduced by half. Mercury also causes a weakening in the walls of the small blood vessels, leading to a reduced blood supply to the organs and tissues. Mercury both disrupts hormone production and release from the endocrine glands, and also blocks the receptors which allow the hormones to dock onto the target cells in the tissues. It may be particularly accumulated within the endocrine organs as a result of its chemical similarity to the essential mineral, zinc. Mercury also collects in very high concentrations in the jaw bones and soft tissues of the mouth. This is a result of it being a heavy metal that literally sinks to the bottom of each body compartment, including the jaws and pelvis, and the fact that mercury is driven into the tissues of the mouth which act as a cathode to the anode of the amalgam filling. Mixing gold and amalgam restorations in the mouth is also recognised to increase the amount of mercury vapour given off several fold, and placing gold crowns over amalgam cores particularly drives mercury into the surrounding bone. Mercury also seems to collect in the many sensory nerves that serve the ears adversely affecting both balance and hearing. For the body, the skin is a major route of excretion and it will try to expel mercury via the skin, leading to itchy rashes and dry flaking skin. It can also cause strange crawling sensations and reddening of the palms of the hands and the soles of the feet. As mercury is excreted in the skin, it causes the quality of hair and nails to deteriorate and may cause loss of body and head hair. It also seems to interfere with the regulation of perspiration so that some people become unable to sweat while others sweat profusely. Some of the mercury vapour from amalgam fillings adheres to the lining of the nose and sinuses where it may cause chronic or recurrent sinusitis or rhinitis and be transported directly into the brain. Mercury appears to collect within the eyeballs themselves, leading to the appearance of floaters, that is dark cloudy areas, but also adversely affects the muscles controlling focusing of the eyes and lens, and the sensory nerves of the retina itself, leading to deteriorating vision. Much of the mercury from dental amalgams is swallowed along with foods or in the saliva and the digestive system is usually one of the first to be affected. Mercury binds with and blocks the actions of digestive enzymes leading to poor digestion and the development of food intolerances. It also alters the normal ecology of the colon, favouring the overgrowth of yeasts and suppressing the growth of friendly bacteria which can lead to the development of intestinal permeability or leaky gut. The immune system is one of the first casualties of mercury toxicity. It causes a reduction in the number of natural killer cells which are responsible for policing tumours and viruses leading to viral infections and cancer. It also actively promotes the overgrowth of yeast such as candida albicans leading to persistent or chronic fungal infections such as thrush and athlete's foot. Mercury also alters the ratios of T helper cells to T suppressor cells so that the immune response is turned on more readily but not terminated, leading to the development of allergies. Finally, mercury binds to proteins on the surface of the cells, leading the immune system to identify them as being foreign and initiating one of the hundred or more autoimmune diseases. Last but not least, mercury particularly accumulates in the mitochondria of the cells where it poisons energy production. This leads to a profound fatigue and to frequently or persistently feeling cold. 
The presence of mercury in circulation can also cause headaches and migraines and other anomalies relating to the autonomic regulation of bodily functions. It can also cause difficulties getting to or staying asleep and can also cause sleepiness during the daytime. There are a wide range of illnesses that have been linked with mercury poisoning, including fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue, various digestive disorders, neurological disorders such as multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease, a hundred or more autoimmune diseases, developmental and behavioural diseases such as ADHD and autism, and cancer. To find out more about the symptoms of mercury toxicity and for a natural programme of detoxification using widely available supplements, please refer to my book, Chronic Fatigue, ME and Fibromyalgia, The Natural Recovery Plan. For more information about the health effects of toxic metals in general and mercury in particular, please refer to my website, www.thenaturalrecoveryplan.com.